Today we look at what type of peppers to grow in this year's garden. We had a recent video about uh, what tomatoes we should grow and this video is about what peppers I should grow um, but we're going to do it again here because it did look like there were a lot of people that did enjoy that video and did like looking through at the various tomatoes as I explored and, and learned about them uh, along with you guys and um, I know there are a lot of people that follow this channel that are very much into pepper growing so this might be even more exciting to look at some various peppers that I have the opportunity to grow I've done a, a fair amount of trading and some exchanges and stuff to uh, to get these pepper seeds and many of them I actually specifically sought out but some of them are completely new to me so we'll go through and we'll look them all up and talk a little bit about them too so um, once again I will add to the description below a table of contents so if there are specific peppers that you want to go and look at don't feel ob obligated to watch the entire video, but can you can skip around and see which video, which peppers sound appealing to you. And uh, hopefully that'll make everyone enjoy this as, as a great opportunity to learn a little bit about some peppers that are available out there. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Our first pepper variety is called the Criola Sella pepper. All right. This is obviously an orange looking pepper. Uh, native to the Andes, the plants are short and sturdy, studded copiously with the golden orange thin skinned peppers. These are not too hot and they have a very citrusy taste. The, this place eats them fresh, squeezed between layers that make up the summer sandwiches, cut them into salsa or dry and grind them up into chili powder. Since Criolla matures before other peppers, even here in a our mountain farm where the nights are cool, we prefer this variety over all others. And that, that is a good selling point. Early maturity, not having to wait on your pepper. Besides the taste, it's phenomenal and the heat units are low enough to allow consumption of many without after effects, except perhaps a warm glow down below. <laughs> Seriously, Criolla Sella is highly adaptable to northern temperate gardens, resistant to viral pathogens, and easy to germinate in cool soil. So, yes, they're selling the seeds, so they're, of course, positive, but that's uh, a pretty, pretty nice sounding review. Let's look a little bit about um, what they look like. Obviously an orange pepper that's of the kind of, you know, Thai pepper, Tabasco pepper type of a, a look to the, the actual pepper. I'm assuming that was a picture of powder right there uh, made out of the Criolla Sella. I guess we will go ahead and look at the next on our list, which is the Hinkle Hot Pepper. Hinkle Hot Pepper maybe? Yeah. Oh, it's a Slow Food USA, um, which has the, the arc of taste, which is supposedly things that are kind of rare, that have very good taste, and they're trying to get people to recultivate them and share them so that they don't go away. So that's, I guess, a good sign. Uh, the Hinkle Hats Hot Pepper, named after its Pennsylvania Dutch, and it looks like it's actually... Um, a corruption of Deutsch, meaning German, not as in from the Netherlands. Okay, so growers that it's a rare earthen pepper which translates to chicken heart, a description of its size and shape, one of the oldest preserved by this group of Mennonites. Uh, flavor described as stocky and considered to be quite hot. Uh, traditionally used for pickling. Um, Often sprinkled on sauerkraut and a pepper vinegar. Very rare and so forth. Now we don't have a whole lot of pictures here. Let's see if we can get some better pictures of the Hinkle hats. So here's a whole bunch of them. Now this is interesting. I wonder if that's just a miss in here or if they come from a yellow and a red. If anyone knows, feel free to comment below if they go through a yellow stage. Uh, but here's generally what the pepper looks like it looks like um, so the Hinkle Hats pepper oh I see yeah that's the gatherers golden sweet so we already know that was not actually the Hinkle Hats so this is the Hinkle Hats now that's interesting those are actually smaller when we have the perspective of hand than I thought from the original pictures 
Um, so this is just kind of a, a small hot pepper, supposedly quite hot. Let's, let's actually look that up just for fun. I won't necessarily do this on all the peppers, but how many Scovilles are in a Hinkle hat? Um, This pepper is 12,000 Scovilles, so slightly more than double the heat of a jalapeno pepper, much less than the habanero pepper. Okay, so when it said very hot, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely hot enough it'll, it'll make the average uh, person notice it. Um, let's move on to the next one, um, the cherry bomb. And admittedly, cherry bomb is actually one I've grown before. I actually liked it a lot, but got a very low production of it when I did it before. Um, it's a pretty classic um, cherry style hot pepper. See, it looks like this. It's just these little small uh, cherry size peppers and they have a nice sweet flavor. Um, they're actually less hot, it says here, than a jalapeno. Uh, two inches, nearly round peppers that make quickly from green to brilliant red, moderately hot with thick walls, which makes them ideal for pickling and stuffing. This early bearing disease resistant hybrid chili explodes with flavor and bears as much as 50% more fruit per plant than its traditional open pollinated relatives. So yeah, this is a, uh, now that's interesting. So that's traditional open pollinated relatives. So under this, yeah, it says it's a hybrid chili fascinating so I wonder if you save seeds from it you wouldn't get the same cherry bomb out of it so whoever shared these seeds with me it's probably not and probably when I grew up before and I, I obviously didn't save seeds from it oh that's interesting so yeah I guess that's interesting if it's not an heirloom if it's not open pollinated if it's a hybrid it'll be interesting to see what i actually get out of my the cherry bomb seeds that i get so that could be a fun experiment if you want to vote for the cherry bomb just to see what i actually get out of this um if it is indeed not let's just you know since we're having fun on google let's um let's find out cherry bomb open pollinated Yeah, F1 tomato seeds, so yeah. No, this is a tomato seed. Okay. So yeah, I guess we're just going to assume the cherry bomb is is indeed not open pollinated. So yeah, I, I think we've probably said plenty about that. So let's move on to the next one. If you have questions that you'd like us to explore further, please post them in the comments section below. Uh, all right, this is the Pequin pepper. Pequin. Now, if I recall, this is actually what is used in one of the prominent either tapatio or or uh, uh, Cholula pepper types um, and yeah these are extremely small if we look over here extremely small um, little peppers that grow on the plant and uh, they have a Scoville between 30 and 60,000 units which is, this says here, 13 to 40 times hotter than jalapenos. Jalapenos are about 5,000 units. Um, start out green, ripen to brilliant red. Obviously a prominent enough pepper that it has its own Wikipedia entry. Prefer moderate shaves. shades, that's interesting. And actually this is, um, something that 
can grow wild in this area. So, um, or, or not necessarily this area, but wild in, in the uh, North American hemisphere. So that's fascinating. And here's, here's where it says the Cholula brand hot sauce list. Pequin peppers and arbol peppers among its ingredients. Now, since we got that little uh, note, let's go ahead and go. One of the varieties on our list is the Chili Day Arbol. So um, that's also in that hot sauce. So let's go ahead and just look at it. It's another variety that is one of our options today. The Chili Day Arbol is a small and potent Mexican chili pepper, also known as bird's beak chili and rat tail chili looks like that <laughs> okay well, yeah there we go it's another picture of it so um, the heat index is between 15,000 and 30,000 Scoville units start out green and turn a bright red color as they mature I do know that these are highly used in a lot of salsas that are you know traditional Mexican salsas and uh, obviously in some hot sauces as well. So this is the Chili Day Arbol. It says it's a good substitute for the cayenne or the, the Pequin pepper. Um, so yeah, if, if you'd like to grow that, um, go ahead and vote for it there as well. So um, let's go ahead and go to our next one, which is the Phileas blue pepper. All right, Phileas blue pepper. A wonderful ornamental pepper. These compact plants have a wonderful bluish tinge and produce lovely small violet blue fruit that are quite hot. These compact plants have a wonderful blush tinge and produce lovely small violet blue fruit that are quite hot. Production is heavy, thus creating a stunning display of color that can't be missed. Perfect for ornamental landscaping or in pots. So pretty. Um, <laughs> other than saying quite hot, there's no description of how it tastes, which is never a good sign if you're wanting to eat pepper. Um, but it looks very pretty. It reminds me of another one that happens to be on this list called the Chinese Five Color, which I have grown before. Um, let's go ahead and just cover it right now too. The Chinese five color pepper. Um, which looks like this. Which, you know, I grew this and it is a very pretty, fun pepper plant. Um, it looks very neat in your garden because it's like these little Christmas lights and they grow upward rather than down. So they're sticking up on uh, your plant and, and they're just tremendously fun. So let's see what it says. Screaming hot little peppers turn a rainbow of vibrant colors from purple, cream, yellow, orange to red as they ripen. Need I say ornamental? The plants are great for containers inside. Just pick a few at any time to liven up your salsa. And to me, they were quite hot, uh, more so than I expected. So, um, you know, good reviews. Um, so I, I, you know, I would suggest, um, you know, that whether we grow the Phileas Blue or the Chinese Five Color, um, one of them might be fun for the channel to, to look at. Probably both of them wouldn't. So I, <laughs> depending how they do, I might, might veto uh, having both of them in there. But feel free to go ahead and vote for one or the other of those. Or, um, or if you want to both, just go ahead and do that and even throw into the comments that you want to see both of them. Um, it, it grown in, in our garden. So uh, moving on to our next one, it's going to be the Creola de Cocina. I first received seed for this great pepper 15 years ago, so I'm excited to get it into the catalog. This small pepper was collected in 1998 from a farmer in Nicaragua. It produces small four-inch peppers that are fragrant, fragrant and richly flavored. These have strong pepper flavor, making them perfect for a variety of dishes. Fruit is very wrinkled and unique looking. Well, it certainly is um, 
that. So let's go ahead and look at the larger version of these images so they show up better for you. So yeah, that's nice. Um, looks like the reviews are pretty good. Mind boggling, it says. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to read all that. Um, quite unusual and tasty. People are delighted to receive them. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's an option as well. Let's move on to our next one. The foot long cayenne. Now I've heard of a lot of different types of cayenne. I don't think I've ever heard of one that's a foot long. Made in the last week, kind of peppers grow to one foot long. Here we see some on Amazon. Currently unavailable, it says here. One foot long, 10 seats per pack. Um, not much of a description. Looks like poor customer reviews. Non German native food. So that's about a specific seller. Let's see. Um, go to one foot long. Sweet cayenne. Amazing long, sweet cayenne shaped peppers grow to one foot long and turn crimson red when ripe. Productive plants bear loads of these crinkly, thin walled fruit that are perfect for use in stir fries or whenever a frying pepper is needed. 75 days. Now, it'd be interesting to know if this has the normal heat of um, a cayenne pepper because this is called a sweet cayenne and they're talking about using it in a stir fry which i don't think you'd normally do with a cayenne it'd be pretty hot for a stir fry you might throw it into a dish to, to flavor up generally um, or you, even a, a couple into a stir fry but not kind of have it be a central part of that stir fry so um, i don't know but i've certainly grown the cayenne before this certainly would be an interesting thing to grow so if you'd like to see a foot, line cay foot long cayenne pepper and maybe figure out whether it is as hot as a normal cayenne pepper. Next up, we have the yellow hot wax pepper. All right, so I guess perhaps this is a normal Hungarian hot wax pepper, which looks like this. A Hungarian heirloom that is excellent for short season areas. Very popular for canning and pickling. Medium to very hot fruit or light yellow in color. Sets fruit over a long season. Yep. Sounds fun. Big juicy peppers, great germination. Close to jalapeno, jalapeno and heat. Great yields. Looks like a fairly popular pepper. So that's the hot Hungarian hot wax pepper. You can vote for that if you'd like. Let's move on to the next. The next option is the habanada pepper. Now I heard a lot about this when it recently came out as a, a sweet, or a, excuse me, a habanero flavored pepper that's not hot. So let's look at it. It says, customer favorite, the world's first truly heatless habanero. Bred by well-known organic plant breeder, Michael Mazurek. Habanada is the product of natural breeding techniques. This exceptional snacking pepper has all the fruity and floral notes of the habanero without any spice. Even the seeds are sweet and add to the flavor. These two to three inch tangerine fruits stole the show at the 2014 Culinary Breeding Network Variety Showcase, where the fruits were made into a stunning sherbet. This exotic new pepper is sure to be the darling of the culinary scene, making it an excellent choice for market farmers, chefs, and foodies. So that's a habanada sweet pepper, apparently quite sweet and has that habanero-like flavor. And um, it doesn't have the heat of a habanero. So if you'd like to see that one, uh, you can vote for it. Next up is the Serrano pepper. This is a fairly common type of pepper you can normally get in your grocery store these days. 
and once again has its own Wikipedia entry showing it's a more common pepper. Serrano pepper is a type of chili pepper that originated in the mountainous regions of the Mexican state of Puebla and Hidalgo. The name of the pepper is a reference to the mountains of these regions in the Sierras. Um, Scoville between 10,000 to 23,000 typically eaten raw. Bright lighting flavor that is noticeably hotter than the jalapeno. Used in pico de gallo and salsa. It is particularly fleshy compared to other varieties, making it an ideal for such peppers. Second most used pepper in Mexican cuisine, which I guess jalapeno is the first, presumably. So anyhow, that is the serrano pepper. If you would like us to grow that, please indicate so. Next is the guajillo pepper. Now, I believe I've actually had the guajillo in this form, the dried form that I think you can actually get at grocery stores these days too. Um, and once again, it has a Wikipedia entry, meaning it's more prominent. A guajillo chili or guajillo chili or chile. Is a variety of chili pepper of the species Capsico anum, which is widely used in the cuisine in Mexico. Its heat rating between 25,000 and 5,000. Reminder, 5,000 is the jalapeno. Is considered mild to medium. They are sometimes used to make the salsa for tamales. The dried fruits are seeded, soaked, pulverized to a thin paste, then cooked with salt and several other ingredients to produce a thick, red, flavorful sauce. Guajillos, chilies may be used in paste, butters, or rubs to flavor all kinds of meats, especially chicken. Alternatively, they can be added to salsa to create a sweet side dish with a surprisingly hot finish. Now, uh, I would just say, from what I remember, these are actually quite sweet, have kind of a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually surprising when you eat a dried guajillo. It's almost um, almost like eating a, you know, a, a, a fruit leather... Um, because it just it has such a sweet flavor, it's really quite good. So um, it could, it could be a fun one to grow. Uh, please indicate if you would like to have us grow that pepper. Next up is the Brazilian starfish. Brazilian starfish hot pepper looks like this. Unique star-shaped fruits are of variable heat, sometimes exceeding that of jalapenos, yet juicy and often quite sweet. Curious looking fruits reach two inches in width, ripening to brilliant red at maturity. Plants are vigorous and unusual, having an almost weeping vine-like habit. Slow to yield, but by the end of the season, amazingly prolific. The species originated in Peru. Yeah, it's called Brazilian. But this variety was domesticated in Brazil. I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's uh, the Brazilian starfish. It has definitely this unique look to it. So it could be fun. Uh, feel free to vote for it. Next up, we have the Greek pepperoncini. Now, I have grown Italian pepperoncinis before. Um, this is a Greek pepperoncini. I'm guessing it's much more similar to what you would get like if you um, order a Papa John's pizza or whatever. Or yeah, this, yeah, I obviously should have looked at something other than this. This is just um, to buy, buy pickled pepperoncinis. Um, here, here, what would be, what would be for? So yeah, I think this is more traditional. The ones that I have that are, that are the Italian pepperoncinis are a little bit longer than this. Um, and this would be the more traditional Greek pepperoncini so um, it says it's sweet crunchy and only mildly hot great for pickling salads and sauces but tasty fresh too prolific and productive even cooler short season areas yielding fruits that grow to be four inches long by one inch wide uh, harvest the peppers when they are light yellow and two to three inches long which note what it says there harvest when they are light yellow I believe these actually do ripen into a red but they are traditionally eaten when they are the light yellow which um, the good thing about that, any pepper that you're eating on the green side is that you get uh, more productivity out of it. You get to harvest it earlier. Um, I do often like to eat fully ripe peppers, but this one might be fun to, to go with the yellow one and get more production out of and, and maybe even pickle a bunch of them. So uh, anyhow, that's the uh, Greek pepperoncini. If you would like to see us grow that, 
um, in the garden. And maybe if we do grow that, we'll even try doing a video about pickling it. I have never pickled pepperoncinis before, so that could be fun. Uh, next up is the Sazerco, I think. And this says tomato base, but it's a hot pepper. Okay. Red cherry sized hot peppers that are so prolific, tasty, and aromatic. Three to four feet tall plants. She says, I was never interested in growing cherry peppers before I sampled this one. Highly recommended. So, yeah, it looks like this. And here is her cherry pepper that is the Cizerco cherry pepper. And obviously she indicates they're quite good. Okay. So yeah, that sounds fun. So there's another one where we would have a little redundancy between that and the cherry bomb. But if you want to do that, that could be fun. Um, you know, eat, eat either one of them or both of them. I, I'm happy um, to try. I've tried the cherry bomb before and I enjoyed it. Um, this might be good too. So um, whatever you want to do there. Next up is the Bulgarian Khratan. There's actually a video we could watch, but um, let's go here instead. Huh, that's a weird looking thing. It doesn't actually give us a description of this. Um, Okay, here we are. Super sweet tomato shaped sweet pepper. Very cold hardy and keeps on ripening until November here in Amish land. It grows on four plus feet sturdy plants and is pervious to cold and even light frosts. With agricultural row cover over it, it even made it through several hard frosts. Thick walls and few seeds make this a great sweet pepper. Could be used for stuffed peppers, but it should be allowed to ripen to deep red. In the green state, it's not so wonderful as when fully ripe and totally sweet. Apparently, this is extremely cold hardy variety. So um, great for particularly far northern gardeners, um, but also good to have cold hardy varieties that'll keep growing into a, a later part of the season. So that could be a fun one. Um, it sounds like it's pretty tasty. So uh, if you'd like to see the Bulgarian Rotund, that is a good option. Next one up, shit shishito pepper i've heard very good things about the shishito pepper apparently a very uh, good sweet pepper um let's look at this well this is roasting of the shishitos um yeah apparently <laughs> as you can see the culinary universe likes it so let's look here at um the gardening universe a favorite old Japanese variety which produces three inch long, slightly wrinkled fruits that are perfect for making tempura and other traditional recipes. Fruit is emerald green in color, ripening red and mildly flavored with just a bit of spice. It really is superb and is the standard with many chefs. Now I did note that when we were on the chef's pages, they were all still um, the green version. So I would assume this is one that you do tend to pick more when it's green, but generally peppers do sweeten when they um, go to their ripe stage and i'm sure this is like that as well but um, green might be a good way to go um, according to the culinary sites kids eating them off plants yeah, so reviews are pretty decent um, the shishito pepper i've i've heard great things so this would be a, a decent variety for us to grow, um, a good variety for us to grow. Grandpa's Home is the next variety. Brilliant red two inch peppers are born upright on tidy plants. The medium hot peppers are yielded in great profusion makes a super container plant, especially for overwintering indoors, as it blooms and set on fruit even under low light conditions. So I guess we could put this in a more shady area. 
originated in Siberia, which all I know about Siberia would be that it was really cold. Uh, these grew really well, lots of small peppers and had a nice flavor and medium heat. I used them to make hot sauce, buying again. That was someone's review. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, apparently these are quite hot little peppers that are called Grandpa's Home. That's an interesting name. Uh, nothing here tells us why that name got on these, but anyhow, these are the Grandpa's Home Hot Peppers. Next one up are the Chiltepin. Chile tepin. I, I think sometimes this is just called a tepin pepper or tepin chili. Chile tepin. Chiltepin. Uh -huh. And I guess again, this is getting its own um, Wikipedia page. Common names Chiltepin, Indian pepper, Chiltepe, and Chile tepin, as well as turkey, bird's eye, or simply bird peppers due to their consumption and spread by wild birds. <laughs> So I guess this is more of a, a wild growing um, type of a, a pepper. So it's gonna be the smaller and in a shrub form. Um, it says a perennial shrub. That's interesting. I see. Perennial in areas that don't have hard frost in winter. Plants can live 35 to 50 years. So if you happen to be in one of those Southern growing zones that doesn't have a hard winter, this could be pretty fun. You could have a perennial pepper plant that you have to do nothing with um, you know, you just plant and it would, it would keep producing fruit for 35 to 50 years. This has heat between 50,000 and 100,000 Scoville units. It's quite warm. Um, you know, not super hot or anything, but, but warm as, as standard consumption of peppers go. And apparently some say it's even hotter than a habanero or red slovenia. So, yeah, this is apparently a very hot pepper. I believe, again, it is one that you see in some hot sauces fairly frequently. Um, so let's see if we can get some better pictures of it. Chiltepin images. Wow. Now this gives you a perspective of how tiny these things are. I mean, those almost look like, you know, I don't know, like Boston baked beans in there. <laughs> so um, tiny. Um, so they're almost like these little seed type. Um, you know, I'm actually thinking of uh, the pods for an asparagus seed, um, just from, from kind of how, how this seems to look in terms of its size. So that, that would be actually very, very interesting to try to use in a, in a culinary fashion, um, I guess you'd, you'd basically just mash it into a sauce or, or whatever else. Um, but it's not <laughs> definitely not a stuffing pepper. <laughs> um, so that's that's that. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Feel free to vote for the Chiltepin. Uh, next up is the Sugar Rush Cream. Now, I've heard of the Peach Sugar Rush. Um, this is the sugar rush cream while well, we're starting with pictures. That's kind of fun. Now this is the, the peach. That's the picture. I think this, yeah, this is the cream sugar rush. Um, let's go ahead and look at the actual site on it. Red elongated ahi type from South America produces blocky rounder pods unlike the elongated peppers of the red and peach types it is very productive and needs to be grown for a few more years to develop more stability and consistency. Now that's interesting. I don't know when this was written, but presumably the sugar rush cream seeds I have might not be consistent. So again, it might be a wild card where we don't know what we will actually get when we grow the seeds that I got in my trades. So that could be fun. Um, but this, I guess, is the base of what it looks like. Um, obviously called a sugar rush. Uh, indicates more of a sweeter flavor profile. Let's see if we can get anything else about the sugar rush cream. And then we can do whole pod reviews on YouTube. Um, now this is just going to be the standard sugar rush. So, I mean, that is the fun thing about this Sugar Rush Cream. I guess we're talking about a pepper that's still pretty new um, in its development. 
this looks like the same description we already saw. So yeah, this is a bit of a wild card. So that could be fun. Uh, feel free to vote for it. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one, which is the Mad Hatter pepper. Hmm. Fascinating. This description only says, talk about plate appeal. <laughs> Presumably called the Mad Hatter due to this hat-like shape. Um, it is a very unique shape, so I guess that's what they're talking about with the, um, it, the uh, plate appeal. Now, this is interesting. It's a 2017 All-American selection for big yields and fantastic flavors. So let's look at... New, slightly hot bishop's crown type. These unusually shaped peppers resemble a bishop's crown. Fruits average two and a quarter inches in diameter and are born on big bushy plants. Moderately sweet flesh with floral and citrus notes and a touch of heat near the seed cavity. Yeah, it's an all-American selection winner. Um, yeah, this, nothing much new. So um, let's see if the ASX selection, I was trying to get it actually the All-American Selections website, which I guess we have a description here. Exotic pepper wins on uniqueness alone. Uh, here we go. Uh, the plant's vigor, earliness, high yields, large size, and awesome taste all contribute to its high score among AAS judges. Mad Hatter is a member of the capsicum buck cotton pepper species from South America, commonly used in Bolivian and Peruvian cuisine. You can impress your friends by growing this pepper and showing off the novel three-sided shape and deliciously sweet taste. The taste has a refreshing citrusy floral flavor that remains sweet, only occasionally expressing mild heat near the seeds. Be prepared for vigorous and robust plants that are easy to grow because they were bred for North America's many growing conditions. Use your abundant harvest raw in salads, pickled or stuffed with cheese, a new flavor. So, Obviously, the AAS people like it and uh, have good things to say about it. So that, that could be a fun option for us to grow. It sounds like a great pepper. Next up is our Satan's Kiss pepper. Satan's Kiss. This looks like we're looking at another cherry pepper type. A popular fast-growing chili variety from southern Italy, Satan's Kiss, also called Bacchio Siligia, Picanti, or Santana, is an heirloom variety. It will get a lot of golf ball-sized hot peppers. It is a sturdy plant. The chili is delicious in many dishes. Traditionally, Satan's Kiss is stuffed with anchovies and mozzarella and then grilled. Let's see if we get anything else out of Pepper Joe's. Check out these cuties. These little poppers are the size of a golf ball. How about a plate of them next to some of our cherry tomatoes? We love them stuffed and grilled. Medium hot pepper. Now this says 40,000 to 50,000 Scovilles. It's interesting how different places call medium hot differently. Um, I mean, th this would be a comparable heat to say a cayenne, I believe. So um, that is the Satan's Kiss pepper seed and um, I think that exhausts our list of peppers to grow there's both some sweet and some hot in here so if you do want to vote for your favorite peppers please go to bestgardenchannel.com and when you get there just scroll down to what peppers should I grow and we have a nice little blog post here that just briefly says that we're having the poll and then it gets right to the poll and Go ahead and enter what you want, no more than 10 varieties, and hit submit. 
and then we'll have the results. So vote by March 14th. We'll probably go ahead and get the seeds started just so that we have uh, enough time for all the growing, but we'll uh, let you know which ones we're actually going to be putting in the garden.